Ladies and gentlemen, we got a State of the Galaxy post coming in hot right off the press for you guys. We're going to break this down and talk all things State of the Galaxy, and I will give you guys my opinions on it. Anxious to hear about your opinions as well. We also have the Ninth Sister announced right now. I'm not going to unveil the Ninth Sister's kit that's on the forums right now. Maybe I'll make a separate video talking about that, but I think we're just going to focus on the State of the Galaxy because there is plenty to chew on just from the State of the Galaxy alone. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. Here we go, guys. Hi, Holotable Heroes. We are charging into this year. I mean, no offense, Crumb, but it's already February. Um, <laughs> with more characters, ships, and the new Inquisitor faction, our team has put together an ambitious plan for 2022. Ooh, do tell. That seeks to keep this game exciting for many more years. <laughs> we will have more to share about some of the larger changes coming this year in future updates, but in this month's State of the Galaxy, I want to give you an update on what's coming in the near future for Galaxy Heroes. Discuss the current meta and the team's goals for shaping the meta over the future. Conquest 13 has begun, and we want to provide an update on where the Conquest characters are moving to. As always, there are a ton of things to cover, so let's dive in. All right, so new, and up, up, uh, new units and themes. Um, as we move on from Legends characters in celebration of Lucasfilm's 50th anniversary, we have another thrilling group of characters to explore, the Inquisitors. If you play Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order or watch Star Wars Rebels, ooh, there's a reference to Rebels, so we probably will be some, seeing some Inquisitors from Rebels. I think that's kind of a subtle allusion there. Uh, then you'll be familiar with the elite group of Force-sensitive agents tasked by Jar Darth Vader to hunt down any remaining Jedi after the fall of the Galactic Republic. And here's the Night Sister. I actually predicted that this would be the next one correctly. There we go, guys. And there was much rejoicing. That's the first time I've made a correct prediction in my entire life. Um, but uh, really excited about that one. Actually, I haven't read the kit yet, so um, I'll, I'll get to that here as soon as we're done with this. Uh, a few weeks ago, we introduced the first member of this new faction, the second sister. The ninth sister will be the second member to fill... <laughs> we released the second sister, and now we're releasing the ninth sister, the second member of the squad the second sister will be a part of. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's getting confusing there. Will be available via Marquee this week. This massive assassin works as the Inquisitor's tank. The Inquisitor squad's tank. Yeah, and we kind of... I predicted that too. Woo! I, I predicted two things right. Come on, let's go. Um, she can take on a ton of punishment and keeps enemy attacks focused on herself instead of her other Inquisitor allies. Hear more about the character from the developer insights. Okay. We will continue to explore more Inquisitor characters as we fill out the squad in the, in the near future, but we are also introducing the Inquisitor fleet, uh, Inquisitor to fleet battles. Uh, with the new TIE slash an interceptor prototype. We already know about this. Pilot by second sister. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we already knew that. Um, ooh, the Galaxy's Edge reference. What is this going to be about? There are two more ships coming to Star Wars Galaxy Heroes via Galactic Chase events that will support existing fleets with faction-specific tanks. Okay! We have been asking for this for quite some time, and I think this is probably alluding to a First Order ship coming. With the introduction of the Executor, we gave the Hound's Tooth a permanent home, which means that some fleets are in need of a dedicated tank. We've been saying this for a very long time. This is particularly important with the emphasis on Grand Arena Championships where multiple fleets are needed. The First Order fleet packs some incredible power, but lacks a tank to protect the more fragile damage dealers. The First Order TIE Echelon shores up this fleet with a, uh, with a tough ship that applies stealth to First Order ships so it can take on hard hits for the team and that's the ship right there that you can see a life-size replica of at galaxy's edge which if you have not been to galaxy's edge i strongly recommend it so that's great finally finally we are getting ships uh for these fleets and it looks like this is going to be a resistance uh, bomber maybe um resistant fleets could also use a dedicated tank and the mg 100 star fortress sf 17 damn that is a mouthful provides a consistent tank or consistent taunt to soak up damage from the enemy. This ship also packs a punch if it can finish its bombing run to devastate the enemy. Excellent. Conquest update. Conquest 13 began uh, last week and brings a number of new data disks, modifiers, and counters to the event. I've actually, we'll talk about this on my uh, stream. Be sure to head over there if you guys follow my streams. 
head there right after you're done with this video. I'm going to be going live as soon as I'm done recording. Um, but there's there's some things that I've I've really liked about this next this uh, edition of Conquest. I want to talk about. Um, the uh, next three conquests will focus on rewarding blueprints for the new tie interceptor prototype, which was announced last week. Which means both at sign and Django will move where Maul is currently rewarded. Maul moves to where Commander Sokotano shards were available, and Commander Sokotano shards moves where the Razor Razor Crest uh, blueprints were available. Last but certainly not least, the Razor Crest will remain available where it currently is. It will be moving to its farm location sometime around the launch of Conquest 14. We have more to share about this in a future update. So, okay, not a whole lot of information there, really. Um, what, what's the meta with you? <laughs> that was punny. There have been a bunch of great discussion. In, there has been a bunch of great discussion in the community around balance and speculation around potential changes to units in the game. While there will always be these kind of questions and concerns, our goal is to be as transparent as possible on when and why we make these changes. To that end, we want to provide some broader understanding on when and why we intervene to change characters that are significantly uh, not performing as expected. Of course, changing a character after launch is something we want to avoid at all costs and is always a last resort, but sometimes becomes necessary. To get everyone on the same page, let's begin with all the different types of units, how all the different types of units fit together and lay out the current hierarchy of power. So they are actually going to define this for us now. Oh, this is interesting. This might be controversial. To be clear, this certainly does not hold universally true for all units, but it is a rough rubric we can use to discuss this topic in more detail. There are many exceptions to the rule in the name of fun and interesting gameplay. Fun? I keep using that word. I don't think you know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> that exists, but overall, this is somebody named that movie. This is a good uh, snapshot of how we will approach this power. So power tiers are at the lowest tier, marquee slash galactic chase. Then we got journey guide and conquest units. So Jedi Revan, Commander Luke Skywalker, uh, Ahsoka Tano would be in that place. Um, galactic legends, and then galactic legends with a conquest counterpart. Now, maybe they're going to say this more on this, but this, like, that concerns me because they've said before that not every galactic legend coming out in the future will have a conquest counterpart. So, I'm not sure what to make of that. They're actually defining that a conquest counterpart means that that galactic legend is meant to be at a higher power level of other galactic legends. So, we are defining. That Galactic Legends have two tiers worth of powers. We got four tiers of power here. And two of them make up Galactic Legends. I'm, I'm not... I, I just think that's interesting. Um, note, this list assumes squad compositions are highly synergistic and have comparable mods. This may not always be the case in practice. And if so, is not a balance issue. For example, a Galactic Legend with weak mods in a non-ideal squad may be potentially challenged as by a well-modded, highly synergistic squad from the lower tiers. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Wait! Why is there no mention of Omicron units in the above list? Omicrons boost the power of a unit. Adding an Omicron will move a unit up around a tier on the scale above, which means their final power varies based on the type of character. So where do they sit on the power scale? Marquee units with Omicrons get lifted somewhere between the level of a journey guide or a conquest unit where a character like Starkiller, journey guide, or Boba Fett, sign a Django conquest can rival a galactic legend. Okay, so they're basically saying that if they get an Omicron, they're going to bump up. So, okay. All right. It is, they're, they're kind of losing me in their language here, but, uh, uh mm. We'll discuss. You come to my stream. We'll talk in more detail. Um, it is important to note that when we talk about counters to a squad, there are a ton of elements that need to be considered, like, did you spend money on the squad? If you didn't, then we're going to nerf the shit out of it. Stuff like that. Um, the intent is that a counter to a squad should be roughly comparable in effort to unlock. There, there's the money. Um, but there are a ton of factors to what is comparable. When we investigate a balance issue, 
Team composition, mods, abilities, ultimates, gear, relic levels, and the consistency of the counter all play a role in the final decision. We examine a number of different squad variations, and we review the data carefully of how all players mod these squad units in order to get the best snapshot of the current balance players are experiencing, but the most effective squads with close to equal modding have the most weight in our decisions. On top of that, the win rate and reliability of the matchup are also important factors. A consistent counter is more likely to see changes than one that is only sometimes possible. Holy crap, they are saying so much here. We also consider how to address those issues while supporting a healthy amount of theory crafting. Somebody's going to have to tell me in the chat what a healthy amount of theory crafting is for you and what you think it means for CG. It is important to strike a balance between encouraging creative uses for characters and keeping the value of progressing to higher units intact. Um, I can respect that. There are a ton of other factors that modify this balance. Omicron versus not Omicron, stronger mods, weaker mods, challenges squads, uh, less than ideal comp. Does, does this squad encourage under gearing or leveling abilities? Blah, blah, blah. Um, also, quick note on defense penetration. The changes last year to ignoring defense focused on units that are completely bypassing defense. Ignoring defense in its entirety was the core of the issue, and those cha changes allow us to explore the design space of defense as a meaningful value. While it is highly unlikely that we will introduce a new character that ignores all defense, future characters may have defense penetration. We made these changes to allow for some counterplay between uh, plus X percentage defense penetration and plus Y defense, um, and also so we can use these stats when designing new units. Who's going cross-eyed? Um, to reiterate, not every unit is going to fall nicely into these constraints, and we may release units that push the limits of these boundaries in the name of interesting gameplay. But I hope this provides some context for where future characters will land and where we may intervene for balance. As always, the team is committed to announcing changes to these units as early as possible, sharing the context for why these changes are necessary whenever we can. Omicrons, we work game modes, and Conquest units have shifted the meta and focus on many rosters, but our goals continue to be a long, healthy life to the game, transparency around upcoming changes, and most important of all, fun, diverse experience when playing with your collection of Star Wars characters and ships. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven basically paragraphs that to me basically said almost nothing. Um, now, I, I appreciate, let me be clear, I, I don't want to be um, too negative Nancy about this because I appreciate the effort to be transparent about this. I think transparency is really solid. And so I applaud CG for doing their best to be transparent about this. But I, I feel like this is an extremely wordy explanation that doesn't really tell me much. It just tells me that they're going to look at every factor possible and make changes as they see fit. Uh, um, so I don't really, I don't feel like this gives me a clear picture. Uh, if anything, this leaves me a little more confused. But uh, if you guys feel like that, maybe I'm just, I'm just being too negative. Let me know. I can sometimes get that way. I will own that. Um, wrap up. I hope the state of the galaxy gets you excited. <laughs> I, what, I mean, what am I excited about from this? Let's, let's be clear. Okay, so you, you're doing something you should have done a long time ago, which is great. I'm excited about this. We got two new ships coming that we've needed. Um, we, and then two units we already knew about. Um, I'm stoked. Hope this Save the Galaxy gets you excited for the next era of units for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and gives you some insight on how we plan and continue to shape the game for a long, fun future. While there are exciting new characters and modes coming, we also have several initiatives from last year to continue uh, put, to push forward. The next phase of the gear intervention, I'm very disappointed. I'm profoundly disappointed that that wasn't in here. Grand Arena update, that I'm really interested in, and the Omicron updates. You will hear from Doja myself in the upcoming Road Ahead. It will cover these next phases for the next changes in more detail, which is likely the next, next major title update and more. Thanks for reading. See you in the hall table here. I've got so much to talk about with this. Please be sure to come to my stream. Um, it sounds like the real meat of what's coming is going to be in the, state, in the uh, Road Ahead post. 
Uh, this, to me, is just a very long-winded explanation of justifying their, their need to nerf characters. I do like that they've kind of defined the power level here, uh, what the hierarchy is. I feel like... I. I, I... <laughs> I, I just, I feel like it's very, very basic though. It's like, okay, so we kind of knew this, right? We kind of knew it was Marquee, then Journey Guide and Conquest and then Galactic Legends. This, this is probably the biggest part that's news to me is that they're, they're actually going to define uh, Galactic Legends with the Conquest counterpart as being above status in, in other Galact, uh, than other Galactic Legends. And, um, yeah, so... Um, overall, you know, I, I, I always appreciate the effort to be transparent, so I, I feel bad if I, if I feel like I've dogged too much, um, for this one, because, uh, I, I think it's great that they're trying to be transparent and, uh, definitely want more of that, but I also feel like they really didn't communicate a whole lot here in this state of the galaxy, and I'm really more interested in other things that seem to be coming in the road ahead, so. Alright, guys, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you so much for coming. As always, my brothers, don't forget.